Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about how to choose a good ride symbol. So after I posted my last strange video about all those unique dark symbols, I got lots of emails asking if I could do a video about how I like to choose symbols. Now I've done a few uh, videos like this, uh, in other words, how to choose a good jazz ride symbol, but I never showed you a symbol that I consider not great because frankly I don't really own any and who would want to own symbols that they don't like but I did manage to dig up this old old symbol that I found I have symbols everywhere and sometimes I can't find them they're in closets and uh, different studios and things like that but I found this really old Ludwig slash Peisty uh, symbol they call them Ludwig standard uh, these from back in the 70s I believe uh, this one I drilled it with uh, six rivet holes to try to make it of some use, but it still sucked. So I put it away in a closet um, and I found it. I was looking for some uh, calf heads the other day and I said, what's this? And, and it was sitting there. So I said, okay, well now I can do this video because now I have a symbol I don't like. And uh, if I've ever had symbols I don't like, I usually just give them to students or I maybe I'll sell them uh, cheaply. But uh, it's very rare. I haven't sold a symbol in probably 20 years. So uh, this particular one, like I said, looks like it's molded after the Peisty 602s, but was most likely a reject that they sent to Ludwig to distribute. I remember Manny's in New York used to uh, sell these things back in the late 70s because uh, I went in there to buy my first drum set. And they tried to sell my parents some of these, but they said, no, nah, we're good. Uh, my teacher had told them what to buy. Thank God. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, you heard this symbol. I'll play it for you a little right now. Now, of course, symbol preference uh, is mainly a very opinionated thing. So what I like, you might hate, and what I don't like, you might love. So again, just like anything in life, we're going to have different opinions about things. But there are certain things that will make a symbol sound better on recordings and live than others. And you might think that's an opinion, but being a recording engineer and an avid music listener for the last 50 years, I could pretty much tell you what works in the studio and live and what doesn't. And a symbol that's annoying and constantly draws attention to itself is not going to be a good thing for recording. So there's a few factors that we're going to talk about. This uh, symbol over here on my right is one you're very familiar with if you watch this channel. It's an old 21 inch 1940s, late 1940s, K Zilch, and I have lots and lots of old K's, which I love. Again, I know some of you do not like them, but uh, to me, they are the greatest recording symbols ever for playing jazz. They're just incredible. And if you listen to any Elvin Jones recordings or Tony Williams or Mel Lewis from back in the 50s and 60s, that's what you're hearing are these old K's. So this particular one is pretty thin. It's about 2,200 grams, which is a great weight for a 21. That's sort of that magic weight. And weight has a lot to do with it. And we'll be, we'll be weighing, I got my little scale here. We'll be weighing these symbols, so that will help you. Uh, weight can decide a lot of things. Not always, but it can really help you choose symbols. When you record, you want to use very thin symbols, especially as crashes. And I'll do a separate video on crash symbols. But today we'll be covering uh, ride symbols uh, from the, um, the size, the diameter of 21 uh, or 22 inches all the way down to 18. I'll show you uh, ones that I really like and some, some that I'm not crazy about. This is really the only one that I don't like. So let's talk about why. So this symbol, first of all, has a hum. And I'm sure you'll hear it when I play it.
So I'm hearing ha, which is a defined pitch. So you never ever want that because when you're doing a recording or even live, like I said, especially if you're mic'd, uh, you will hear that hum. And if it's in a different key than <laughs> the rest of the band, that could be really, really annoying. I remember a bass player many years back complaining about a drummer's cymbals, saying that he didn't know what was wrong with them, but he couldn't stand them. So then I went to go see them play live, and I knew right away he was using these uh, A Customs uh, for jazz, which is probably not the best thing. And they, they really hummed. The ones he chose, they're not all bad at all. Some are great, but these particular cymbals were humming. And the bass player was hearing that, and when he was playing right next to him, he was picking that up and it was driving him nuts, but he just didn't know what it was. It almost sounds like feedback. So that's the, that's the first thing that's annoying. The next thing is this really metallic kind of sound. So Pisces can sound a little more metallic, especially the 602s and the 2002s. They can sound a little more metallic, but uh, not to the extent of this one. So f for whatever reason, it's extremely metallic, which is annoying. It does have a nice bell, though. But the bell still has a hum from the cymbal. Okay? Now, we'll move over to a cymbal that I do like. And I'll tell you why. Now, I use this mainly, in fact, always for playing jazz. It's a jazz cymbal. We'll play some other kinds of cymbals today. But this cymbal, first of all, does not have a hum. It's also got beautiful overtones that are controlled. They're not, you know, all over the place like this. So none of that kind of up top annoyance there. It's just very dark, very out of the way, almost a pad, like a cushion for the rest of the band. does have that great K spell sound, which is very dry and not loud. It never gets annoying, the old K, and, and some of the Istanbul blows phosphorus same way. The bells are not bright, they won't take your head off for that kind of music. Now if you're playing a lot of rock, You're going to want that bright bell sound, for sure. And there's cymbals that will give you that without the hum. The other thing about it is it's very crashable. Without overwhelming things. This one, on the other hand, overwhelms pretty much everything. Now, once again, we're talking about the jazz genre, so not the best kind of sound there, all right? Uh, for me, my opinion, once again. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a few other symbols up here and show you different characteristics that I like and that I don't like. So this is uh, uh, newer K Constantinople, expensive symbols, but this is considered a low, medium-low uh, ride, so it's a 20. So right away, a beautiful crash. And 
and a really nice bell sound. Not the okay sound, but a beautiful sound. These are readily available. Uh, you can find them uh, new. Okay, so uh, a beautiful symbol as compared to. And no hum. So this symbol comes in at, and it's, again, it's a heavier symbol. I've used this for pop music. I'm going to turn this on. So this is 2,032 grams. By the way, when you weigh a symbol, that's the way to do it. Take your scale, put it on grams, and take the bell and put it on top. And get your hands off it because it won't be accurate that way. Okay? So that's another 20 like this that I really, really like. And I will tell you the weight of this one because we're about to get rid of it. All right, this is 1,000,000. This one's light, so it's 1,731 grams. So again, a light symbol, but just doesn't sound great to me. All right, so we'll put this one away. Now, let's show you some 18s. I love 18-inch ride symbols. I got a thing for them. And uh, I have a lot of old Ks. I have seven old K rides. So I took some out. And we're going to show you one that's bad, or that I consider bad, for a few reasons. So here it is, super old one, probably 1940s, 50s, all right? So a symbol like this will go for probably around anywhere from seven to $1,200 on the used market, obviously. They're not made anymore, and you can hear it. Uh, actually, we'll put, before we do that, I'm going to put a good one up. So this symbol is uh, 1950s, uh, maybe 60s. Is it a new stamp? Yes, it's a new stamp, so it's a 60s K, all right? And we'll give you the weights in a minute. So. So this was in all likelihood a marching band symbol. They did make K marching band symbols or an orchestra symbol, uh, which it might sound great for that, but it does have a hum. Uh, is what I'm hearing. All right, it's too heavy. So this symbol, <laughs> let's see, it feels really heavy. Symbol is 1,684 grams. With the 18s, weight is a big deal. The sweet spot is normally about 1,400. And so this one right here, yeah, is 1,400 grams, uh, 1,402 grams. So you got a 200 gram difference between these two. So uh, just while I, I have this on here, this is a Bosphorus. So this is a very funky symbol. which I love. But it's too thin to be a ride. It's a, it's a crash. But this one will be light. So this one is just uh, 1,104 grams. So very light, as you see. A little too light for a ride, but it's a cool symbol. We'll put this away here. And I'm going to put one more up. This is an old Sultan. This is the original Istanbul from the 80s. If you went and bought these, 
before they were Istanbul. These are great symbols. So and this one is 1,400 grams, almost like this one here. But they're going to be very different. So. So once again, I, I prefer personally the thinner cymbals. They record better. This one's not terrible, um, but a lot of the old Ks, be careful when you buy them, they have these bad hums to them. So it's a little too heavy. That's 1,600 grams, a little too heavy for an 18, all right? But um, not, not as annoying as that Peisty. And we'll put one more 18 up here. This is one of my favorite ride cymbals. It's an old 50s K. Now this one does have a little bit of a hum. If you've watched this channel, I use this a lot. So I'm willing to put up with that tiny, tiny little hum because it's such a great sounding cymbal uh, and it's heavier. So it's a ride cymbal, more or less a crash ride that you can crash. And this one is, this is 1500 and change. So 1508 grams. So it's a bit heavy, about 100 grams heavier than these others. All right, but 100 grams lighter than that marching band symbol. And to me, this is the heaviest at 18 that I would use. And it, it's a, just a really great symbol. I've had this forever. So I have several of these kinds of Ks, but these, this one is my favorite crash ride. And this one is my favorite ride. So uh, let's go for some symbols here now that you can buy. So, and you could buy these old Ks, they're, they're always online, uh, but you're going to spend a lot of money for them and they, they might be bad. So make sure there's a sound file, listen with headphones and listen really carefully for any kind of hum and look at that weight. The weight is the important thing. So once again, a thousand grams would be really, really light, more of a crash symbol. Anything over 1200, you can ride on it, but not to exceed uh, 1500 grams. So if you get an 18, that's a 1600 gram symbol. It's too heavy. It's going to be a marching band symbol. All right. So let's take a look at. Um, put this away. A Peisty 22 inch traditional. You can find these used. I just saw one this morning. A beautiful symbol. And we're going to do, take another Peisty 20 inch traditional. Now this symbol is a medium heavy ride. So it's an all-purpose symbol. And it's 2397, so almost 2400 grams, which is heavy for a 20-inch ride, in my opinion.
So uh, I love both of these rides, and I used them all the time for big band playing, pops playing. Uh, these are all round rides, in my opinion. Use them for rock, use them for blues, jazz, funk, anything. Okay, so uh, this is, these are the Pisces Traditionals. You can also buy the Masters series. I don't prefer them as much as these, but I prefer these a little bit on the heavy side. The lighter ones, uh, so in other words, the 2,000 gram light ride or a thin ride, they call it, it's too, too light. Uh, I don't have that here. I wish I did, but um, that's at my other place. But um, that's, it's good for really light jazz or with rivets, but other than that, not great because it just washes out. So for a ride symbol, again, you need that definition uh, like this has. With that nice wash underneath. That's control, not out of hand. All right. And the other thing uh, that I haven't talked about, I didn't talk about real quick, the way a symbol feels. So it gives you this feedback. Some symbols they're so uh, mushy sounding that it basically feels like you're playing in sand. Uh, but a, a symbol, the feel of it, especially if it's a little thicker here in the center and then tapers off thinner, sometimes these symbols actually turn up a little. Uh, that's the feel that I like. The main word is control. It's a controlled sound. All right? And we'll just weigh this one. I don't think we have. Remember, it's a 22. So this one's 2,617 grams, which is a good weight for a heavy all round symbol, which is a 22. So finally, we're going to do a couple 18s that, um, oh, I forgot about this symbol. It's going to be a long video. This is a Bosphorus. So I want to show you, uh, this is not an all round symbol. So I love these Bosphorus Turk rides. And, but this is a little too thin. So I, I wanted to show you an example of a very thin symbol. So uh, again, I love, these are some of my favorite symbols to play on for light jazz, but anything heavy, you overwhelm it and the wash will overwhelm that stick sound sometimes. So this is the light one. This one weighs 2,026 grams. All right. So, you know, a little bit light. It's a 20. All right. Let's see if I forgot anything else here. I showed you these Sabians. Uh, the other day. So look at that Sabian video. Oh, yeah. And um, this is a vault Sabian. It's a, uh, a gr another great all round <laughs> symbol. So it's got a good stick sound, it's got a really nice spread, no hum whatsoever, and a nice bell. So that's what makes a, a, just a really good general purpose cymbal. And on this side, the last 22 I have, or 21, I'm sorry, uh, this is 2095, 2095 grams, great weight for a 21 like the old case, and these are the Istanbul Agops. Probably the, my favorite modern symbol that's being produced that you can get.
Once again, no harm, beautiful spread. Definitely crashable, thin, and feels great. These cymbals are really easy to play fast on if you have to play fast. Right? It is not an all-around cymbal. Don't, don't think you're going to take this on your rock gig. It probably won't last the night. But for jazz, fantastic. And let's get back to these 18s. So we have two 18s here. These are A's. They're around the same period, uh, the 70s. So uh, you can tell by that Zildjian stamp there. Pretty obvious, OK? So uh, these are not my favorite crash cymbals or ride cymbals by any means, but they can be nice. But I got one that I like better than the other. So here's the first one. like them both actually <laughs> but uh, I prefer this one here. all right feels better it's I believe it's a little bit lighter but I'm not yeah I think so yeah so once 1300 and once 1400 you know and change so so not too much of a difference but so the story with a lot of these symbols is you got to try them in person. It's great when you can go into a store and find two of the same symbol, or three or four. I used to go into Drummer's World in New York. Barry, my buddy, uh, would have lots of symbols, the same kinds, and we'd go through them and find ones that I was able to find ones that I liked. Uh, same thing on 48th Street before all that went away, Manny's and Sam Ash down there. You, you were able to do that. Not so much anymore. But, uh, but again, these old 18As can be really nice crash symbols. And no hum whatsoever. I chose these for that. So uh, I take that back. I do, I do like both of them. I haven't had them both up here for a long time. So. OK, but you hear the difference in these. You can actually use them both effectively on the same kit with the same symbol set. Finally. We have this really interesting ride. It's a remix ride, an old one. I think they reintroduced these as something else. Someone told me, I'm not sure what, but I love this ride symbol. I don't know why it's so great, but it's hammered and it's just got a really cool sound. So it's my favorite 18-inch ride cymbal, uh, pretty much, uh, except for that old K I showed you earlier with the rivets. So if you could find one of these used, uh, it'd probably be more difficult, but I think they re-released them. And someone will chime in here in the comments uh, to remind me what the new ones are called. But the originals were the breakbeat rides. And that's an 18 I've actually used on gigs. It's actually a pretty good all-round cymbal. You could bash it, you could play jazz with it, and crash is really nice. All right, so. Uh, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, again, most of this is opinion, what you like. There's certain symbols to me that uh, they're really heavy, like the old Peisty Rude symbols. I remember the first time I hit one, I was like, this is horrible. Uh, but again, you go to a concert, you see people using them, and they might sound good 
with a metal band or something like that, and you'd never break one because they were so thick. Same thing with the old Zildjian Earth rides. I had one of those when I was a kid. It was this giant 22-inch, really heavy cymbal that when I tried to play jazz with it, with a big band, I thought the guys were going to kill me, these old guys. So I got rid of that real fast. Uh, but I think now they're just worth a lot of money. So, But again, it was a very obnoxious, super dry cymbal. Uh, one of the symbols that's really great is the Jack D. Jeanette ride. You've seen me play that. I, don't, I can't find where mine is now. I have a whole set of those, by the way. They're extremely dry, but they have a really nice dark sound. So that's a symbol that you either love it or you hate it. I love it. A lot of people hate it. They're the original, original uh, signature Jack, Jack D. Jeanette symbols. You could see those in uh, some of my ride symbol videos if you search ride symbol on my channel. All kinds of videos will come up. So I hope you enjoyed this little foray into um, uh, how I like to choose my symbols, what I look for, uh, what's you know, the characteristics. So once again, you don't want to hum. That's the big thing because that can interfere with an actual recording or playing. You want it to be, if it's a ride, crashable for sure. should be able to crash it and ride on it. You want a nice spread and you want stick definition. And most importantly, you want it to feel good to you. And I can't tell you what's going to feel good to you. But if you use proper technique and a lot of fingers, uh, these thinner rides will feel good. The heavier rides, they don't give, it's like playing on a table. So a ride has to have a little bit of give, but it can't get overwhelmed with overtones. So it sucks you in like you're being, you know, hit by a wave. All right, so I'll play just a little and then we'll see you soon. <laughs>